Due to public demand, I want to create an Epoch video series that explains how to install, use, and make the most out of uh, the awesome procedures for Cypher, a procedure library for Neo4j. First, I want to start with a little bit of background, and then in the next episodes, we'll look at installation and different parts of Epoch. Neo4j has developed over the years from an embedded Java API uh, over a REST server uh, to the introduction of Cypher that originally was served over HTTP to in 2016 uh, a binary protocol called Bolt uh, with official language drivers. And due to the change to the binary protocol, we couldn't use the REST APIs for management uh, functionality anymore. So as part of that, um, user-defined procedures were added to Neo4j as a new capability. And in the subsequent versions, uh, also user-defined functions and aggregation functions were added, which was really cool. The, uh, basically, the binary drivers for Neo4j exist for uh, JavaScript, uh, .NET, Java, and Python as official drivers, and for all the other languages as community drivers. So you could, should find something for your language uh, really easily. But today we want to look at user-defined procedures and user-defined functions and aggregation functions. So basically, um, you can implement them in any programming language uh, on the JVM, uh, in Java, in Scala, in Kotlin, in Groovy. And um, so it's basically uh, a annotated uh, Java method that is then deployed to Neo4j and can be called from Cypher, either standalone, so as a call procedure name or as part of Cypher statements. So here's as an example. Uh, we just call the epoch index notes function, pass in an index name and a query, and it returns um, a note and a score. And we can return then from our query the note and the score um, as, as results. But you could have also called epoch index notes uh, as a standalone uh, procedure and then the query would have returned a node and score as uh, the two columns. Internally, it looks like this. So you have a uh, Java class that has something uh, injected, in this case, a graph database service, and a procedure with this name that you just saw, and the parameters that you just saw, uh, index and query. And basically, it returns a search hit uh, stream. That means uh, it doesn't just return a single row, but it returns a streaming result of, of data that could be uh, potentially very large. And internally, most of procedures are quite quite small and return a, um, a custom DTO class uh, here. For user-defined function, it's similar. Uh, they're a little bit more flexible because they can, can be called in any uh, expression or com computation. So in arithmetic expression, Boolean expressions and predicates and return expressions, in create statements or merge statements, everywhere we can have a built-in expression of uh, Cypher or a built-in function, you can also use a user-defined function. And in this case, we have the epoch text join function here that we just call as part of the return statement. And we take this list of words and join it with a space and uh, then we see hello world. Implementation is even simpler because it doesn't return a stream, but just a single value. So it could be any of the uh, cipher types, so uh, strings, numbers, booleans, uh, lists thereof, node, uh, relationship path, maps, and, and so on. And uh, so we just can basically call this code and return the string, um, and then we are good. And for aggregation functions, uh, this is a little bit more involved because they have to keep state, because they have to aggregate data in, in some data structure. And here's just an example um, that you can use for um, your own aggregations. So basically, here's an example that computes the longest strings of a list. And um, internally, it just creates an instance of this aggregator uh, that keeps the longest string and the, the length of the string. And then for each update, for each row, it gets an update call. and we can see this um, being computed, and then at the end, it returns the result. But actually, we don't want you all to go ahead and now write your own uh, user-defined functions uh, for anything uh, that's kind of more util-level uh, code. Of course, you can do it for your custom business logic, and uh, probably should also should do that for 
high performance uh, business logic and custom uh, functions. Uh, but in general, uh, as utility, you shouldn't do that. So we have quite a lot of projects in um, Neo4j Contrib that already use uh, use defined procedures and functions. So um, Neo4j graph algorithms, a APOC uh, that we talk about, Neo4j GraphQL and Spatial all provide um, user defined functions and procedures for you to use out of the box. And that brings us to APOC, uh, which is a project uh, I started way before Neo4j 3.0 came out uh, to basically play around with this procedure API and which now has evolved into a pretty uh, active and large project. Uh, you see that we have um, quite a lot of contributors and uh, had already almost 30 releases and almost 80,000 uh, downloads so far. And that's quite cool and I see it, love to see it used. And if you use it, uh, please let us know. Also, if you have any questions or so, please raise an issue or ask in our Slack channel about it. Basically, um, APO can be seen as a standard library or a typical uh, Swiss army knife uh, of procedures and functions. And uh, you, there's nothing you can't find in there. And this video series is meant to give you a little overview over all the things that are there and show you in practical examples how you use them and uh, find uh, the things that you could utilize. And this is the first bit. Uh, following up, we will do installation and then the individual parts of APOC. If you have questions, join our Slack channel. There's a dedicated APOC channel that you can ask. Uh, in uh, the repository, uh, I created a short link here, Neo4j APOC on the bit.ly. And if you want to watch further web videos and other videos around Neo4j, go to our YouTube channel. Thank you.